The other thing too, what about if the you know he said that it could have been a man in a suit? Hello. Right. If you're gonna say it could have been a man in a suit because you think there was a movie production, well, you're gonna shoot a man in a suit and then find out what it is later. I think we should check. Right, come on. I think now. we should check for shallow graves in this guy's backyard. Is what it sounds like. <laughs> I mean, we don't we don't want to put him on blast, but unfortunately, it's just a story. If you I, don't want to lose your hunting license, rule number one: don't shoot anything you don't have a tag for. Right? If you're a trophy hunter. That's that just doesn't make sense at all. He somebody's lying about something. We were road hunting. We do it from time to time. We had decided to leave for the day. We were done at this particular spot. So we had we'd taken this, uh, it's a left turn from where we were going. And we had gone around the corner as the big meadow. We go past the meadow. It wasn't in the road, but it was just off the road, maybe 80 yards. Uh, I was on the right-hand side. I was the passenger. So we are pretty much expecting to see a bear in the spot. And instead, we saw... When I first met Justin, I was a, a skeptic, not just of Bigfoot, but of Justin too. I had read about his story online, and there were a lot of players involved, which kind of surprised me. Doctors, researchers, a few different organizations. But what really got me were these DNA studies popping up around it. So when a friend who ran a blog, Bigfoot Evidence, called and, and said, Justin wants to tell his story on camera, I said, yeah, let's do it. So he came down to my house. I set up two shitty little cameras in my kitchen and just one microphone. I didn't even mic myself. It was supposed to be this quick little interview for a few hundred curious onlookers, myself included. So Justin and I talked for a couple of hours. I spent a day editing it all together. Then I uploaded it to the web and that was supposed to be the end of it. Well, as you've probably guessed, it was only the beginning. Just let, let, listen, you'll hear him.
And so you, you, you open the door and you kind of fall into it. And I'm sitting there looking at this. And I'm like, uh, my buddy's like, bro, don't shoot. Hey, bro. Brett, no. Uh, hey, yeah. Hey. And he wants to like make sure he's like getting louder and louder, like immediately. He's like, hey, 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 hey. Because he's waiting for the gun to go off. Because at that point, six, seven seconds into it, the gun's usually gone off. I mean, you don't, bears don't just wander in meadows. They hear the truck. It, it goes right. real quick. Right. Uh, and you can shoot from the road, not that it matters. So uh, he's saying. It's not considered a road. It's a, <clears throat> it's a dirt road. It's not considered a path. There's no paving. So he's yeah. saying. Don't shoot. You're looking through your scope. What's what's going through your mind right now? This ain't right. This, 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 ain't, this, right. this ain't right. I, I would have felt the same way if I seen a hyena or maybe even a unicorn or something. You know, I mean, it, it literally, that should not be here. Uh, if I saw a hyena in the woods, I, yeah, I'd kill it. I mean, I, yeah. it shouldn't be there. Right. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Uh, he's a green. See, you hear this? I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, <clears throat> I'm okay with all of this so far. Yeah. Uh, and, There's a part, though, uh, I'm going to ask you about, and I think you know what, what's coming. At some point in the next few seconds, your partner says, it's a man in a suit. Yeah. Yeah, so my buddy's like, hey, don't shoot, don't shoot. And I'm like, you know, he keeps giving this order with no reason behind it. He's like, it's a man in a suit. And I'm like, I'm sitting there looking at it, and I'm like, that's exactly what it looks like. I mean, it, it, that's what it looked like. It looked like a man in a suit. The best way I can describe it is Patter, Patterson Gimlin. Mm -hmm. It looks like a man in a suit. There's no... Yeah. That's what it looks like. I'm not no saying it is. Reference. Yeah. It, 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 it look, it, it, people's like, oh, it's graceful. It's, I, don't, I don't see that. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. See. I'm on the fence about that myself. So. Yeah, I, I don't you see know. it being graceful. I see it looking like a man in a suit. I'm not saying it is. It's just that's what it looked like we saw. So it was standing right there. I mean, it's got its hands in the air. I mean, just like this. Uh, and I mean, just typical. You know, I got one foot on the ground, and I'm sitting there. Uh, then that—that's when the, my buddy uh, starts saying, "Don't shoot! Don't shoot! It's a person in a suit. Don't shoot!" And it's just—it's got its hands up very much like that right now. And then it was just slowly taking a couple steps. I mean, it was just, just kind of like that. That that range. How many more seconds go by before you pull the trigger? Somewhere around then. I mean, I'm squeezing. It, it, What's it's, the last stop before you pull the trigger? When's it going to go off? Because it felt like an eternity. I mean, it felt like time had stopped. So, uh, gun's getting ready to go off, and I'm waiting for it, waiting for it. And it starts to turn a little bit because I, I, I had the crosshairs about well, pro pro probably center mass. And it turned a little bit. I don't know if it was getting ready to run at that point. That I, I don't know. But it, it turned a little bit, and that's when I got it right there. After we released the first interview, the accusations and the hatred came out in waves. All the red flags were quickly raised by online commenters, and truth be told, some very good points were being brought up, so I knew that I had to dig a little deeper. And for me, that meant talking to the one guy who could corroborate or blow Justin's entire testimony. And that was his partner, the driver. Up until now, the driver refused to get involved or give his side of the story, which was highly suspect to Justin's critics. 
the driver wasn't interested in facing the ridicule and circus act that had begun to follow Justin. But after some convincing, he agreed to it as long as he could remain anonymous. So we set up the interview. He walked right off a job site in his work clothes and said, I just worked a 12 hour day. You can have 30 minutes, then I'm out of here. If by chance I was walking through the woods and I found a freaking gnome or a gremlin and I shot it, there are serious repercussions for shit like that, I'm sure. Or like mm -hmm. a chupacabra out in the woods or something ridiculous. Yeah. If people find out, you get in trouble. It ends up turning into all kinds of crazy stories and shit storms and it, that's exactly what happened with all this if you think about it, which is the reason I try to stay out of it as much as possible. Like, I don't need my family thinking I'm some fucking nutter who thinks he shot a Bigfoot. Yeah. My family doesn't know about any of this. None of them do. You don't like that word Bigfoot and you don't like being associated with it. I don't feel the need to be associated with it. It's, it's fine. It, something crazy happened that day absolutely and it is what it is and it totally could have been a big fight it could have totally not been a big foot but i'm also the type of person that i'm not going to bullshit and say i know for a fact it was a big foot 100 percent i know for sure it wasn't a big foot 100 percent i know what i saw i saw what wasn't a bear that was in the woods that looked like a person in a bear suit and we shot it I could see, and I could visibly see with my own eyes. But, uh, that's, I mean, I, 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 I could see it. I have to do this fucking incredible. Holy fuck. There's, uh, there's such a good chance we could find a track over there, though. I mean, you don't understand how loud this was. I know we got some of them. The truck is stopped. My door's shut, his door's open, he's got a foot on the ground, he's got the rifle sitting there, he's looking through the scope, he's posted up, he's ready to shoot, and I pretty much start telling him, don't do it, don't do it, because there was something wrong. There was something off from what, in both of our minds, no is supposed to be there. There was something that wasn't supposed to be there. So, I don't know what it was, but in that point in time it was, this is probably not a good idea. But then again, if I was the guy in the passenger seat, my instant thing is to jump out the window because it's, or jump out the car because it's on my side of the window. Probably would have gone the same way. But I didn't have the rifle, so. Yeah. I was, at that time, looking through binoculars trying to look at it. Which I, if I could go back, I would have stepped out with my rifle too, probably. What did you see through your binoculars? Uh, I don't have the greatest pair of binoculars and I had it set up to look quite a bit further than what we had it set up to, but even looking through the binoculars, it didn't look right. It wasn't a bear. I'm not going to say what it was. Height-wise, I'm pretty tall, I'm 6'3", six, 6'4", six, something like that. It was easily 9 inches taller than me, 10 inches taller than me, like it was easily close to eight feet but I'd say probably seven six would be it looked huge but looking back looking at the terrain that's around there was bushes around sizing it up in my head probably puts it at like seven six besides its appearance what about its behavior that screamed to you not a bear it had human-like behavior it, the way it was standing the way it had its arms up in the air it, bears don't do that. Maybe in the circus, I don't know, but bears in the wild, they don't do that. Like it was the actions and even a little bit of the emotion on the face, because I was able to see pretty well through the binoculars, like there was a different expression than what you would see on a bear. 
and bears usually turn around and go the opposite direction they don't go towards you and it was walking towards us full stride walking towards us so now about four or five seconds have gone by and he he's getting tighter on the trigger i'm guessing about oh yeah he's slowly squeezing getting ready to let go yeah, absolutely and what are you saying to him the whole time it was don't shoot that's that's all it was the whole time telling him not to shoot it's not a good idea and this is all yeah within five seconds and then there was no convincing him at that point just as much as there probably would have been no convincing me at that point because he had the rifle if i had the rifle i would have probably done the same thing I'm assuming it's about 10 seconds between that point and the point of the trigger being pulled. Can you walk me through it's that? It's probably only 12 seconds between the point where we came around the corner and I stopped my car and he pulled the trigger. Like it was 12 seconds the entire time, maybe 10, I don't know. It doesn't take very long. If you wait any longer, you're going to miss the shot. And for us to drive that far and go home with nothing sucks. We do it all the time, but... Yeah, and it's almost dark, you pull the trigger, you, you make it happen. You don't miss a shot because you're trying to figure it out. So, five seconds in, you know he's, he's pulling the trigger. You pretty much are assuming that. I was surprised he hadn't already pulled the trigger. Like, he doesn't wait that long. Like, so maybe that's where he was realizing something was a little off, I don't know, but it usually doesn't take five seconds for either of us. It's usually a lot faster than that. So the trigger's pulled and you get the big boom. What happens after that? I am still looking through the binoculars at that point when the trigger gets pulled. I didn't even put it down. I couldn't stop looking. And I saw where he hit it. It was a fantastic shot. And I just remember seeing the way that the ripples in the skin and the body had like a concussion to it because I was staring so intently at it. It was. It was intense. It would be like throwing a baseball in a bowl of jello, the way the body shook when he hit it. It was pretty cool to watch, actually, yeah. which people can say that's fucked up. I don't care. Yeah. It was pretty fucking awesome. It stumbled. It didn't fall right away. It stumbled a couple more steps, hit all fours, and took off into the bush. What would you say its motion was similar to at that point? If you're, are you still watching it through the binoculars? Uh, I had dropped the binoculars after it hit all fours and just watched it, just with my eyes, running. And it, it didn't run like anything I've seen on four legs. Like if you and I tried to do it, that's what it would look like. But ten times as fast as either of us could do it. Like if I got on all fours, that's what it would look like. It would look. It looked awkward running on all fours, but it did it very quickly. Um, then it, it went down, it hit the ground, and then it starts, you know, kind of like flopping and kicking, which is exactly what you want to see. Like, you, you want to see it, you know. And it starts flopping and kicking, uh, and all of a sudden it, it, it gets up on all fours. It's, it's, it's gotten and it's starting to run, and then it's starting to walk, and it's falling. I mean, it's it's, it, it, it's on all fours or mostly trying to run on two. It feet. was just it was uh, staggering. I mean, no different than if I had shot a person for sure. Like if you shoot and you just, I mean, it's, uh -huh. it was staggering over so the now, hill. Now, as you're watching this, are you as I'm watching this, or you're no, I, I mean, like four seconds had gone by, maybe. I mean, it's it's not a lot of time. You know, it hits the ground, and I have another round rack in there, and it's going over the hill. And I can see its ass, and I can see where I could put one straight up its asshole, which is actually a really good shot because you don't hit any bone. It goes straight in there and uh -huh. ends up somewhere in here and just messes them up. silent. I think I got someone here. I think we're looking at two of them. I'm not kidding you. It's fucking scary as hell. I know. Oh, so 
So it hits the ground. It's getting ready to go over. I racked one in. I'm sitting there squeezing. And I got it. I, I got it to a T. I mean, it's going to die. That second shot's going to kill it. And it's going to go pretty much straight up his asshole because it's just getting out of sight. I knew that I had this thing. And again, I'm just thinking whatever mindset. Uh, this thing needs to die. It's not natural. It's... No, it's not right. Whatever this is, let's kill it. Just like that, but on all fours. And I got the shots going straight away. I'm squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And then my buddy says, no, wait. But he says it in like such a panic that it was like, I actually did, whereas before I didn't really listen to him. And I had the kill. I mean, it was, it would have dropped right there. I bet my life on it. Um, and I look and there's, there's two more of them that appear out of the brush. Once, because we had our attention posted on whatever he shot and as it's running away we're looking at that to see where it goes because we got to track it and then after it's gone we look at each other and then we look back over to where he shot it because that's where you start you start at the blood trail and you keep following it we turn and then there runs out two small ones so we drive a little bit in there we can't really drive anymore so we take off on foot into this meadow um, Why are you chasing it at this point? Uh, we, do, we just wanted to find the adult. We just, we figured, I felt like it was a kill shot. I got to about right here, and then I see one and it's just standing right over there. The, a, l a little one. My buddy's like, oh, there, right, right, right. And I look and I saw it just as he did. I mean, they're freaking 10 yards from us, 30 feet. And close like from one side of the street to the other and they're the kids the things the little monkey type little kids whatever they are so I'm just looking at this like uh, I mean they're close and they don't seem that concerned that we're there they're walking around looking for their for their parent so we are too so this goes on for approximately, they would, they would, you know, come together, oh, oh, and then split up. So you heard, you heard them talking? I guess, that's what it sounded like, it yeah, like, yeah, it was communication. Point, yes, you heard it. Yeah, they're going, oh, no, no, no. I mean, if you've ever heard a de deaf person trying to talk, that's what it sounded like. Just, no, no, no. They'd walk around and we're, you know, we're not even really paying two shits about them. We're walking around, looking, 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 like, oh, so... Uh, I ended up telling my buddy, hey, go, go down over here. And then we, we heard some mountain quail jump up. And I said, oh, well, maybe they're over there. Maybe something's scared. So he walks down over here, and I walk over here. And I decided at some point, fuck it, let's just shoot one of these little ones. Um, we'll just take one of these homes. Why? Why? Would <laughs> why? What do you mean, why? What, what, what takes To be problem? done with this. To... What's going through your head? Why do you say, fuck it, what, let's be done with this? Did, have you even put together in your head what's going on yet? If we go home and tell somebody this, they're never going to believe us. I mean, this is... Might as well shoot one of the little ones and take it with us. Okay. Is that, is that pretty bad? Is that... I don't know. I wasn't there. You come across the small ones. You've mm -hmm. seen them in the area. They're about 15 yards away from you. Mm -hmm. Do you feel threatened by their presence at all yet? No. 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 Do you have any idea at this point as you look at them closer 15 yards away what you might be hunting no i still don't know at that point i i still don't know at this point to be honest like exactly what exactly happened i don't i don't know they started hanging out looking around I, they were obviously looking for whatever we shot they were walking around looking for it too making noises back and forth to each other trying to figure out what's going on they're within like 15 yards of us the whole time it's getting closer and it's kind of getting this it's making some noise or something I, I, I can't really remember I mean it's just making some, some sounds and so I, I center it and I start squeezing I, I center the rifle start squeezing and I'm right here at the center of the neck because I figured I didn't want to mess up the skull but didn't want to blow apart the body I don't know it seemed logical at the time so I decide I'm shooting it I start squeezing 
And it gets pretty close. It gets like really close. And I'm like, oh shit, this is weird. This is weird. This isn't right. Mm, yeah, I'm going to do it. So I shoot it right in the neck. I shoot it right in the middle of the neck. And it, I just steep enough. I'm going to roll down the hill, hit my shoe, uh, my boots, the head did, and it started bleeding on my right boot. And I reached out and grab it. I'm sitting there looking at it like this, like its head's like right here. I'm sitting there looking at it like, fuck, what happened? Because like you really start to like look into, well, I'm not going to get all weird spiritual or like nothing, but it, you look into their eyes and it's different. It's like, this thing's little kids. And so I'm sitting there looking at it and it's like, it's like coughing up that, that blood. And anytime you shoot an animal in the head, it's just there, like coughs up. It's coughing up the last bit of blood. And um, uh, it, it, a bunch of stuff happened, but I mean, it ended up, you know, two or three minutes later, it ended up expiring. I was pretty much just sitting there staring at it like, what the fuck? This is, this is a little kid. This is not an animal. Cause it, it, I mean, it, they look like little monkeys and you get them up close and you see their eyes and they, they're, they're surrounded by white and they're, it's a little kid. Seen that way. You know, do you do you remember Justin shooting, taking taking that shot at the little one? I remember Justin and I talking about it before he did it. What did you tell them? Don't what did you see? <laughs> don't fucking do it. <laughs> There's already one on the ground. You don't need to shoot another one. Like it's, we need to just look for the one that we're looking for. There's no point in doing it again. We're already feeling weird about it as it is. And you want to take another shot. How do you feel when you hear that second shot? Do you know what happened? Do you think he's, do you think he shot the big one? Or do you know he shot a little one? Or do you, are you assuming it was a warning shot? I turn around and I look and I, see exactly what he did. I didn't even have to think about it. I, I saw what he did. Create some tension at that moment? And in, in tensions increase a bit between you two? Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? Like, here we are again. And I don't want to get in trouble. Like, that's my big thing is I still got to go home. I still got to go home to my family. I can't be getting in trouble for fucking stupid shit like this. But at the end of the day, Justin's still like my best friend and it was his judgment call. He, he'd take the rap for it all day if we were going to get in trouble. He'd say I was hiking on a hill somewhere far away. Just as much as if I did something wrong, he would do the same thing for me. And I'd do it for him. But it still was like a what the fuck did you do moment. Like, I don't know. So, so now you're in a different it. state of mind. You're just like, what the hell's going on? You went from hunting like, mode. Yeah, to the same, right. Well, what did I do? Yeah. Real quick. Real sobering moment. Um, yeah, and I'm sitting there holding it. I don't remember if it was before or after it expired. It was somewhere in there. I, mean, I remember looking at the ice real good. I remember certain parts, but some of it was kind of foggy looking back at it. My buddy walks up the hill and is like, Really? You know, because he, he, he had he'd hold, held out for the hope that I'd found the big one. He's, he's walking up the hill ho hoping that I'd found the big one and just gave it the last shot. Um, he's like, really? Really? So he just had to shoot one. He said that. He's like, I'm like, screw you. I started running up the hill and saying, what the fuck? And then he's like, look at this. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did you do? Like, Yeah. And so I threw it at him. It's dead. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just threw it towards him and started walking up the hill. Because I was like, you know, you don't know what I'm going through. You, you don't know anything about this. That's kind of, kind of like the attitude I had. But I said, screw you. And um, I start walking back towards the truck. I'm just like, whatever. He's going to freaking get on me for shooting one of these freaking animals. We're not even supposed to be here in the first. We don't even know what these things are. He's going to sit here. Oh, let's not shoot them. Let's not shoot them. Oh. 
so I get like 20 feet away. I look back and he's sitting there holding it the same freaking way I was like. And I'm like, oh wow. Okay, well, that explains why we feel so weird about the big one because right. now we see a small one and it's like, it was extremely abnormal. Uh, so I walk back and I'm like, well, we just shot twice. There's only a matter of time before fish and game pulls around the corner. Definitely not rational thinking. Like, yeah, fish and game is going to pull around the corner. Well, we shoot all the time and they never pull around the corner. Let's hide it and come back. Let's get out of here. We need to get out of here before we get caught. We're going to get a lot of freaking trouble for this. Why are you thinking you're getting in trouble? Because you just kill some little kids. So Kid. Yeah. And the parent. You felt that at that point you were thinking that this is someone human at that point? Is that what you're thinking? Uh, or is it just. <sighs> It's just not an animal. They're very human. Not, I'm not making a statement about them, but that's how I felt at the time that... I mean, they're very, very, very human. I think hunting, you harvest. Uh, that was more or less murder on the little one, the big one. Uh, it just is what it is. I didn't take the body. We left it there and buried it and hoped to come back the next day. Um, a huge storm came in, we didn't get in right away. We did get back to the place and we found some hair and some hide in the general area. Uh, it was just some hide that was covered in hair. Uh, it would definitely come from an animal. It just didn't look like bear hair. No way they'd leave those bodies there. There's no way. They're kind of like a people and they're like a tribe. Yeah, they pull their own dead out. And every native will tell you they stick them in caves and cover the caves with rocks. A lot of people don't understand why I didn't take the body. I guess that's fair, but you just don't understand. Like, I try to put it into words, but I can't do it. Like, what, what it was, was it was a person. It was too human. Was it a literal person? No, but it was a little kid. It was, it was, it, it, it looked like a little kid. It was, it was, what I shot wasn't an ape or a gorilla or anything like that. It was, it was, it was a type of person. It was, you can't take a picture of a little dead boy. You just can't do that. I mean, like what was going through my mind is just, this is disgusting. Like what, what did I do? I still enjoy hunting, but what I did was not hunting. That is not something that a hunter does. That was, it was, it was just murder. It was just, it was just killing. There was no point to it. I wasn't going to eat that. It, it is not a game. It is a person. Uh, if I could take it back, I, it's nice to say that if I could take it back, I would. But if I could take it back, I would just take the body. Say, screw it, and drive past the warden really fast. Go to the news station. As hunters, we're always afraid of seeing the game warden. It seems like you're always breaking some law, no matter what you're doing. You can try so hard to follow the laws, you're always breaking some law. There's always some fish and game code violation you're breaking. Uh, to me, being after you kill somebody, you're afraid of whoever you might see. And that's how I felt. I felt like I had killed somebody. And I was afraid of anybody that I would have seen in an authority figure. The wardens are the only people that, that really police these woods. So in my mind, I was just afraid of seeing the only cop that could catch me for a murder.
after talking to both Justin and the driver multiple times about the event, I was getting more and more curious. I think most people would have just turned away by now, but I was nearing the point of no return. I had begun to speak to Bart Coutino, a Sasquatch researcher from Monterey, California, with a background in criminology. He had been researching this event for the last year and had some interesting insight. Both uh, Justin and the driver, uh, they, they came to Monterey to visit me in my hometown. Uh, and I had actually uh, spent some time with them, got to know them a little bit more. And it was actually that night that I had, um, kind of embarrassed to say, but I actually eavesdropped on them on a property my father owns, a, a brewery in Monterey and underneath the deck. And, you know, I had listened to these guys and I really believe that, you know, I was gonna hear these guys say, you know, uh, something to the effect of, uh, you know, think he's buying it or, you know, and that's all I needed to hear was one word. And, you know, it was, uh, I was gonna go right upstairs and tell them to take a hike. And uh, it turned out that I ended up listening to these guys intimately talk between themselves uh, for several minutes about the event and talking about uh, positioning they were in in that day and perspective and that type of thing and talking specifically about that day. And uh, that was very compelling to me from a personal perspective because it, it uh, you know, to have two people when they're alone, you know, and not have any fear to talk about this, they had no idea I was listening to them. We had decided that it was time to turn the investigation up a notch. So I traveled to Justin's home in Sacramento, California, where we arranged to have a professional polygraph examiner have a crack at him. You look nervous, dude. Come on. Oh, uh, yeah, no, there's, there's definitely like. I saw your legs twitching. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's completely focused on me, and, and that's. And yeah. But that's why we'll leave. Well, like the repercussions of this to me are like. The limestone instrument is the most accurate instrument in the world, and it's the same instrument that our Department of um, Defense uses in espionage, sabotage cases. Our um, U.S. Army uses it, and our federal agencies, which hiring higher patrol and sheriffs and stuff, they use the same instrument. Tested and validated as being 98.99% accurate, which is just the most accurate as you can be without being perfect. In late October 2010, did you directly fire on two animals, one adult, and what you believe is one juvenile of a species others would logically term Bigfoots or Sasquatches? Yes. With the first shot fired on sight, a direct hit to a bipedal animal you've never seen prior? Yes. When you saw this animal, did you believe that it was an animal that does not exist or even could exist? Yes. Did you encounter two animals that you believed were relative juveniles of the adult subject you just shot? Yes. Would you like to uh, give us a little review of what just happened? Well, I just uh, polygraph ex uh, tested Justin Smeha um, on a situation where um, he claims to have uh, shot a bipedal primate um, and a juvenile bi bipedal primate um, in the mountains and I tested him on um, uh, questioning him whether to the truth of the matter and he completely passed every question the charts will be given to prove the accuracy and the results of the test that he completely passed and is telling the truth about shooting a bipedal primate. Based on your experience um, and this, I'm just going to put you on the spot. Based on your experience, and you've been doing this for 10 years, and the results on this test, are you inclined to believe that Bigfoot is a real creature or not? I believe Justin. Um, I, I believe Justin not only because of the uh, the results of the in instrument that I used to test him, but just on um, talking to him and knowing liars in the past and knowing, <laughs> reading the um, facial expressions and... Um, body movements of people that don't tell the truth. Justin doesn't appear to have any reason to be lying about this and doesn't appear to need any kind of um, personal or financial gain from it. Basically just wants to tell the truth. 
were you referred to us by a friend? Did we have any association? Did you know any of us? Absolutely not. I have no uh, previous contact or do not, I've never seen any of you, ever. Nope. <laughs> Justin, I know like you were confident you were going to pass, but still there was some level of stress. I was nervous. Uh... I don't know if that's normal or not, but I, I, well, she said it was, so I guess it is. But I was nervous, but. So is there like a level of relief at this point? Even yeah, though no, I'm about to call Derek and call Bart and be like, hey, here's a confidence booster. Thanks for believing me or saying that you believe me. Um, but th that's kind of what it's about, being able to like tell those people that have really put a lot of effort into this and money and time. Hey, here's a confidence booster for you. You say that you believe me 100%. And you say you, you bet your life on it, but now you really can. <laughs> now you really can believe me, you know. At the very end, she said, do you want to know if you passed or failed? And there's like kind of the pause, because I, I, you're, you're nervous taking one of these tests where somebody can say definitively that you lied or that you're telling the truth, even though I felt like I was telling the truth. And so I said, okay, I want one more question. And she said, well, we'll have to start it. I said, okay, fine. She said, well, I'm gonna have to ask you 10 more questions just to get one question. Okay, I want one question. Did you shoot something that looked like a person in a bear suit? And she said, okay. So she, she gave me the question and then she's all, you'd passed on everything before that. And you passed on that too. This right here is proven Sasquatch bait. In my opinion, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it's uh, it's worked in the past. It's a mixture of deer liver, uh, a couple rabbits. It ferments in the sun with some sardines. It becomes liquefied. It actually melts down the bones and everything in the sun. And then you end up with a liquid that it's, it's pretty rank. <laughs> so. I won't even put it inside my car when I'm driving. I put it in the back of the truck, I then cover it with something and my truck still smells for a week later. So it's, it's just fermented uh, deer organs and uh, rabbits. So hopefully we're downwind from that because we'll get it all weeping if we're not. They're right where 
you shining the light? You don't hear that? What do we do? Yeah, yeah. Still, they're still over there. Whatever it is, it was calling. Oh, well, I know what it was. It's what? It's, it's calling. Body tracks. But here, mm -hmm. and it, right. here. Mm -hmm. Here, this isn't a very big stride. Right. Here, you know, I lost it, but this is where it's good. best night that anybody can expect. Um, we got Sasquatches coming, you know, camp, and then we wake, wake up in the morning and we find this. Um, looks like they were ninjaing us. Needless to say, we couldn't believe what had just happened. It was surreal to say the least. The only reason I came to the kill site was to have Justin walk me through the events, take some video, and finish the story. But the most intriguing thing to me, that evening's event put Justin into a depression. Later, when I asked him what was wrong, he simply said, I wish that never happened. No one's going to believe me now. At that point, we knew we had to come back. And next time, we need to be better prepared. So we started to make more trips just to find out if this is really happening. Then late in August of 2012, it happened again. Looking like we were going to get shut out, hadn't heard anything. We did knocks and calls, all kinds of provoking stuff all night. One thing that I was amazed though, I have never seen as many deer in a one mile square radius as I did that day. And uh, they were all on the hillside as me and Ro were walking down. So Sean actually drove up, picked us up, brought us back. And we, were, we had the fire going and uh, Justin was dead tired. He fell asleep in the cot by the fire. Michael Lorenz went to bed pretty early in his truck. So there's four of us up. And I just made a last minute decision. Um, I was just curious, should I go to bed? I was just tired. And like I said, Justin was already out, and I just looked at Sean and I said, let's go, let's take one last walk. So Sean and I actually, uh, we went for, went for a walk up. Literally, it was two minutes later, it was Sean and filming squatches. Just stay absolutely silent. I think I got someone here. I think we're looking at two of them. I'm not kidding you. It's fucking scary as hell. I know. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I'm an expert in, in the hours I use thermal, which is about over, well over a thousand, probably 12, 1300 uh, hours of thermal last uh, seven years. So I know. Um, I know these units inside and out, and I've had one for that long. I knew 
uh, from seeing pretty much every Pacific Northwest animal. Um, I was confident what we're looking at. I just, my fear is what it's always been is that I wouldn't get them in the clear and, and they certainly aren't in the clear and not definitive. Many return trips have been made to the kill site, hoping to recover more evidence. Hair, tracks, audio recordings, almost all things leading to inconclusive results. The infamous recovered piece of hide that has been tested by four top DNA labs. At first, every single lab was excited upon visual examination of the piece. But in the end, after months of going back and forth on results, Three out of four labs concluded that it was nothing more than a very unique piece of bear hide. As for the boots, no DNA could be recovered from the dried blood due to contamination. Justin was back to square one. And to make things worse, a popular international television show featured Justin in his story, making him look less than favorable. The host of the show... Uh, he lied when he said that I told him that my sample came from the juvenile Bigfoot that I shot. It's simply not what I said. I've never made that claim to anybody. And so for him to say that for the sake of the storyline, to me it just fucked everything up. You know, just throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, it just, you, you take and you make such a big mistake. He knows I never said that. He was asked to say it. They did it simply for the storyline. Piss me off. We know that the flesh sample didn't come from a Bigfoot. We've right. known that for, well, damn near a year now from two different labs. Right. Four months prior to the show being filmed, I gave him the DNA results for the piece. I don't know why he tested it. I gave him the DNA results. I gave him two different labs, complete sequences. And I said, mm -hmm. hey, here's this. We know that this is a bear. This isn't from what I shot. Okay, cool. That was the end of the story. You know, it doesn't really seem like it matters what they say because there'll always be another study. There'll always be somebody else saying this or claiming that. To me, I've contributed all I can do. So I would say that it doesn't matter at all to me. It, it would be awesome to have a study where somebody says, hey, he's telling the truth. But at a certain point, it's not about anybody else. It's just about me trying to make peace with what happened. Was it a person? Was it an ape? Or a, or a wild per, a wild man, or was it something that, is there a lot of them, is there a few of them? It's just an opinion, but I think they're probably people. I mean, they're, they're at least, they're, they're, they're more human than anything else's, besides obviously us. The truth is sometimes I don't even feel like I really know what happened. I mean, it was a crazy situation. It was a dream that I wanted to wake up from. Uh, then to be able to have this situation that's so outrageous and try to explain it to people. It's easier just to not talk about it. You meet a new friend or something and all of a sudden maybe they'll, they'll, they'll add you on Facebook or something. And they'll be like, so what, what's up with that Bigfoot stuff? It's easier to just leave it alone. It's, uh, you try to change the subject, 
because once you start talking about it, usually they're sitting there with their mouth open and be like, huh? Wait, what? So you, you, it's not a joke? And I'm looking forward to being able to show people answers. But honestly, I, I don't know what's going to happen from here. I've done everything I can do, I think. If somebody comes up with a new idea, email me. But I don't have any other ideas to show people that I'm telling the truth other than to just keep doing my thing. But at a certain point, I have to push everybody aside and say, I don't care. You know, I know these guys very well, and you can tell from their facial reactions that it was very difficult to listen to the story and the, and the real intricate details of, uh, you know, how the juvenile was shot. And, uh, you know, uh, Justin was very upfront about it and, you know, didn't give a politically correct version. He, he really walked us through piece by piece. And uh, you definitely can see some tension in the air, yeah. I don't hold anything against Justin. I don't know how I'd react in that situation, but just seeing the locations and, and you know, being able to imagine exactly what happened. I mean, it's pretty, and it's pretty heavy. Like, it kind of makes me, my stomach sick a little bit. Just, you know, um, getting the word out to other hunters that, look, this is, this is not what you should do in this situation. And we have somebody here, Justin, who can tell them, look, don't do what I did. And I think that's really important um, to hear it from somebody who's been put through the ringer, um, not just because of it, it, him doing this publicly, but it's hard. You've been coming back here quite a bit um, since the original incident. Um, I, I think I've spent 72 days up here since then. Is there a particular reason why you need to come back? To find answers for myself. It's not even about anybody else or showing proof. It's, you know, first I thought, well, what if I killed the last two? And then I thought, you know, I don't care anymore. I just want the answers for myself. I found stuff, I found tracks, and I was like sitting here, can I tell anybody about this? I'm gonna keep it to myself. And I felt like it showed me something here and there, but it's not even about anybody else. I'll come up here and nobody will ever hear about it but I'm trying to find some kind of answer just to satisfy my own need to make peace with what happened. So is there a next step or are you just waiting, uh, playing a waiting game at this point? I'm done. I, I, I'm done with the public aspect of it. Uh, I, I'm not gonna do a lot of interviews or talk because I don't really have anything left to say other than I'll always have the personal curiosity even if 40 years this blows over and I'm in my 70s or something, I'll still be coming out here if I don't find some answers between now and then. So, how do you tell your kids about that? <laughs> Think about it all the time, I don't know. I, I, I'd like to be able to show them something that says, hey, your dad's not crazy, but I think about that one a lot. I, I, I don't know. Justin's sometimes crass and unapologetic approach has earned him no sympathy from his critics. And although there may never be convincing proof that what happened to Justin and his partner on that day actually happened, for myself and a handful of hardworking researchers, we have learned the truth. And now we're committed to proving it.
almost like a DUI checkpoint for hunters. And so they know that everybody in this huge area from here all the way to Nevada, they can use this road to get in and out. So they'll check everybody for their license, their Bigfoots, their bears, their... <laughs> First hand. Wait, Sean's peeing in the background. Oh, damn it. I got Sasquatch snot on my, on my hand. What, the, you know, my daughter, well, what's she going to say when she's in junior high and somebody Googles her last name and they come up with something crazy? You know, you well, start stuck in, in the cast. Yeah. You can shatter the cast, which might be worth it, actually. You can shatter the shitty one. <laughs> They're all shooting my family. I know. <laughs> Let's check out those. I'm gonna stretch my lungs. Stretch my diaphragm. The, the readers want to know, do you own any shirts with sleeves? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. <laughs>